the Amazon rainforest on the Brazilian-Peruvian border. The region of the Ashaninka, the brothers of the people. A new generation of Indians is using unconventional methods to defend itself against those who are exploiting the rainforest. Gangs of woodcutters that are invading their territory illegally. We used to defend ourselves by bow and arrow, but that doesn't work anymore. Our modern weapon is the internet. This is the only way to ensure safety on our territory. Importante para nossa utilidade em defesa do nosso território. A piusha village deep in the Brazilian rainforest. It is a home and a refuge at the same time. 400 Ashaninka Indians live here, from catching fish, from hunting, and from whatever the soil yields. The Ashaninka defend their Indian traditions vehemently and with pride. Yet, unlike most Indian tribes, they combine this ancient knowledge with the accomplishments of modern society. It was a long journey before the Ashaninka found their home here. They originally came from Peru. During the Civil War at the end of the 20th century, they got caught in the conflict between the state and the guerrilla organization Shining Path. The Ashaninka were the victims of forced recruitment and massacres. A minority, about 1,000, fled to Brazil. But the fight wasn't over. Illegal gangs of woodcutters invade their territory. The extent of the devastation is only visible in the air. The Indians record what is happening here on video. Activities that the public knows nothing about in 2001, the situation comes to a head. A shoe? Those aren't our tracks. They discover a deserted camp of the wood pirates. They have cut down all the trees. They're sick. It's hollow. That's why they left it behind. I've been threatened several times. They were looking for the ringleaders. The attacks began when we tried to prevent the logging. The woodcutters felt their livelihood was threatened, as if we were taking something away from them. Once they wanted to kill me, when my brother and mother were with me. Many people with machine guns, revolvers and knives. This moment has engraved itself on my memory. A mahogany tree gets up to 90,000 euros on the international wood market. A human life isn't worth much in comparison. On the outside, I stayed calm and talked to them about life.
They are only interested in the wood. But we are striving for a new way of thinking, for respect between the peoples, and to protect our way of life. Benki's composure saved his life. But a little while later, the tribe learns that wood pirates are on the march again. It's the year 2001. At the time, they are the first Indians with internet access, a pilot project of a Brazilian NGO. For the first time, we were able to mobilize them all, the courts, the public prosecutors, and the federal government. The authorities respond immediately and send in the military. A unit from the Brazilian Air Force is ordered to arrest the woodcutters. The soldiers comb the forest for culprits. They arrest a good dozen of the Peruvian wood pirates. The raid is successful and changes the lives of the Ashaninka. Now they want more. They want all Amazon Indians to be given internet access. Ever since then, we know that the internet can save us from attacks. It is an important means of defending our indigenous population. With this large network, everyone finds out what is happening on our sacred earth. We can even use photos. The power of the internet really helps us here, so deep in the jungle. The cocoa fruits are ripe at last. It's not just children who like the taste. The monkeys have already been at them. When there are fruits, everyone wants some, the animals and the people. But there are enough for all. To this day, the Ashaninka people live from what the rainforest provides. They hand down their knowledge from generation to generation. On Sundays, when the schools are closed, the children learn how to reforest the cleared areas. Tree for tree, they discover the diversity of the tropical rainforest. Shaman Moses shows them where the plants grow best. Moises' brother Benki shows the young Indians how to use the ancient forest with traditional methods, without destroying it. Many white people say, there is so much rainforest. And what do they do? They simply cut it down. But we plant additional trees for timber. In order to extract color from the bark for clothing or to make medicine from the trees. Every tree we grow has a specific purpose. Take care with the roots. If the tree is big, I will build myself a canoe from it. Leaves, roots, bark, the fruits, the resin, the wood. The Indians use all of the tree for food, timber, or medicine. When I am big, I can climb up it. Exactly. In 30 years, the tree will be really big, too. I explained to the children that we build with them, with our own trees, so that we don't have to fell the rainforest trees. A seer once prophesied that the future of the Ashaninka would rest on the shoulders of the chief's sons, Benki and Moises. 
So the father decided that one would study forestry and the other would be trained as a shaman. The brothers would unite modern and traditional knowledge and use it to preserve the natural surroundings. Today, the Indians are fervent conservationists because of the destruction of the environment. They are the ones that fight for the environment, the forest, the animals, the ground, and the river on a daily basis. The earth is alive. Where the forest is intact, we have life. For the Indians, wealth means having a forest and soil. If it weren't for the Indios here, even more of our planet would have been devoured. What we are trying to do is to protect our way of life for the coming generation. It takes the Eshaninka three hours to reach the harbor Marechal Kamaturgo from Apusha. Despite their isolation, they know how to communicate their goals with modern tools, unlike many indigenous peoples. This is how they managed to gain sponsors for their project, the ancient forest school in Marechal Tamaturgo, which is now known far beyond the borders of Brazil. There's fire, and where there's fire, there's smoke. This contains carbon dioxide. Where's the smoke going? Where is it going? Up or down? It's going up. This causes the greenhouse effect. And it's getting worse all the time because so much CO2 is being released into the atmosphere. The Amazon rainforest is the largest carbon sink in the world. Since the 1960s, two million hectares of jungle have been burned down every year, a catastrophe for nature, as well as for the climate. Amazonia is home to 20% of the world's fauna, over 50,000 known animal species, and a fifth of the Earth's fresh water reserves. The Ashaninka see themselves as part of the rainforest, just like the plants and animals. Shamanism plays a large role in the way they view the world. Shamans feel so closely connected to nature that they believe they can communicate with animals. One day, I went into the forest. When I was deep in the jungle, a jaguar appeared before me. Now the time has come, I thought. Today I will fight a jaguar. Moises drew his weapon. The jaguar ducked. But he said to him, don't be scared, I won't hurt you. The jaguar turned round and disappeared. But he came back three times that day. The Ashaninka worship the gods of the forest. A drink from one of the ancient forest's lianas enables the shamans to make contact with them. Moises is out gathering these plants. This is the horua plant. We use it to make the ayahuasca drink. It enables us to discover other ancient forest medicines and shows us how we can heal with plants. The Horua is the brother of the ayahuasca liana. God created both the plants and sent them to us so that they would teach us the healing power of the rainforest. The Ashaninka believe that ayahuasca imparts knowledge and skills to them, a plant of the gods that gives supernatural powers. The drink they brew from the liana allows them to make contact with the dead and the forest spirits. The Ashaninka experience their faith in a particularly intense way while under the influence of ayahuasca. 
Deus quando quando subiu para a terra que vivia com When the God Power lived on earth and wanted to ascend into heaven The Ashaninka asked him Who will teach us how to live on the earth now vai continuar ensinando como viver na terra Who will heal us when we are sick? The God answered that we would never be alone. A strict diet, abstinence, and little sleep. This is how Moises became a shaman. For a whole year he lived in the jungle and fed himself on plants and roots. He knows the riches of the rainforest like no other. The god had taken one of his daughters, blew breath on her head, and turned her into a plant, the Hurua. Then he took a son, blew on him, and changed him into the Liana. In order to protect and spread this ancient Indian knowledge, Benki, the shaman's brother, founded the ancient forest school. First and foremost, it is a means of educating people about the environment. It is also about sustainability. How does one use the rainforest without destroying it? Our work has a history, a life, and we want to show it to you. Benki sees himself as a mediator between the modern and the Indian world. His dream is to see the other indigenous communities become as independent as the Ashaninka are today. Their village, Apusha, is considered a model project in Brazil. There are many more bees than there were last year. They're really excited. I can tell it will be good honey. That looks very lush. Fresh honey from their own beehive. All the families in the village grow, hunt, or collect almost everything they need for their own survival. They are, for all practical purposes, self-sufficient. Come on. Open your mouth. Our family used to be dependent on the large landowners. The whites had managed to drive us all in different directions. We were scattered all over. It was impossible to stay a community. Luckily, we managed to come back together. The Ashaninka believe that the history of their people lives on in each and every one of them. Since the middle of the 1980s, they have been taking part in the fight for indigenous rights. This is what makes the rainforest so precious to them. If we were to speak of the value that the forest has, it is valuable because it has no value. It is greater than everything else. And that is the difference to those who steal valuable minerals and wood. For them, the forest has a value. For example, the profit they are hoping for. It has an exact price for them. A mixture of cocoa plants and herbs to purify the soul. Moises prepares for a long night with ayahuasca. The soul travels through time during this ceremony, they say. Moises believes he encounters spirits, and he wants to look into the future. You hear the voice of the god Pawa. He teaches us everything. He reaches everywhere, like the wind. Whether it's a good or a bad place, he is there. He knows every corner.
Fala uma palavra que todo mundo pegou como moda. There's this fashionable expression. The rainforest is the earth's lungs. What does the earth's lungs mean? Look at your lungs. Where would your body be if we took away your lungs? That's what it's about. That's what we're fighting for. Rio de Janeiro, at the other end of Brazil. The Ashaninka found allies here. Businessman João Fortes pulled out of his family's business two decades ago. The real estate corporation João Fortes is an old and powerful family business. My name is also the name of my father and of a large company. I always found it hard to accept this name as a reflection of my own identity. It was as if I was one person and my name another. Since then, he has been involved in promoting the rights of the indigenous peoples, from his own pocket if need be. I could have done something different with the inheritance from my dad, buy a bigger house, a better car, a boat, buy, buy, buy. But what do I leave behind for my children? The best thing to bequeath them is the integrity of my work. He wants to be a role model and believes that the fight for a better climate cannot be left in the hands of the politicians. 56 million people in the cities. The exhaust fumes from the ever-increasing volume of traffic compound the effect of the greenhouse gases. A quarter of Brazilians have no access to clean drinking water. All this provided the impetus for the first major environmental summit in Rio in 1992. One of those who spearheaded the movement was businessman João Fortes. This is how I found my purpose in life. With the involvement in environmental protection, the indigenous peoples and the forest, I was doing something different. Back then it was pioneering work. In 2003, João Fortes founded Regi Povos da Floresta, a network aimed at protecting the habitat of the ancient forest peoples against raw materials piracy. It currently has a project to connect 30 Indian villages deep in the jungle to the internet, like the Ashaninka. That requires good logistics. We want to link up Indian communities, which are separated by days of traveling. Many feel isolated in the rainforest. When we connect them to each other, it makes them stronger. Nowadays, the brothers Moises and Benki hold presentations on the struggle of the Ashaninka outside Brazil, too. One reason for their cosmopolitan outlook may be their mother, Dona Pichi, a white woman. The daughter of a rubber tapper, she fell in love with an Ashaninka chief and followed him to his village. His father asked for my hand in marriage. My dad consented, but my mother didn't want to. But I still married him. She said she had never seen a white woman marry an Indio. She feared he might leave me later, not like me anymore, or 
be ashamed of me. But to this day, that never happened. Thank God. We've been married for 43 years now. She had always warned the Ushaninka about the exploitation by the large landowners. People often resented her for this. My wish was to see them free. Free from patrons, free from violence. Then they started to fight back. Her sons say they understand how Brazilians think because of Dona Pichi. That's why they work so well with them now. Back in Rio. For the network of ancient forest communities, things are entering a crucial stage. The internet equipment for the Indians is being sent in the direction of the Amazon. The people from Rio are ready and the people with the solar collectors from Sao Paulo will be arriving on the same day. Climate protection is no longer a national issue. After all, environmental pollution doesn't stop at the border. This is a global task we are addressing. A government cannot do it alone. Our network connects everyone the rainforest with the cities, the forest peoples in South America with each other, and with the whole world. The material they dispatched to the Amazon, for 30 new internet points deep in the rainforest, weighs no less than nine tons. In a small firm, the last computers are packed up. All that's left to do now is charter the freight plane. Excellent, thanks. That worked out too. The convoy can begin. First stage, the internet equipment leaves Rio de Janeiro by truck and plane. The material covers at least four and a half thousand kilometers on its way to the jungle villages. Three days later, the equipment arrives in the middle of the rainforest. It then continues its journey on sand tracks and on the river. The first village that Benki and Moises want to connect to the internet lies in the Contanava region, close to the Peruvian border. It is considered very dangerous here. Illegal gangs of woodcutters regularly invade the area, cutting swaths and wood roots for large firms from Peru. Fishermen tell how a nearby area has just been cleared for a landing strip. Benki and Moises check out the situation. At least one square kilometer of rainforest has just been slashed and burned here. Everything is disappearing, our water, our forest, our fishes. How are we supposed to survive? Angry, the brothers continue their journey. Their discovery is a major setback for their work. Once they have set up their camp for the night, they consider how they might respond to the attack by the woodcutters. What should we do with these people who are destroying the forest and the trees? It is sad. 
Eu fico muito chateado e com muita raiva vendo cada um compreendendo. I am very angry. This is no game. Uma das coisas sérias que nós estamos passando agora. The exploitation of the rainforest by the Peruvians is a serious problem. Nossos parentes estão sendo mortos. Our brothers in Peru are being killed, or they have to flee to Brazil, where they take over our habitat, and that creates new conflict. Mas eu estava pensando assim, será que esses nossos filhos sabem? The woodcutters pollute our rivers, and I wonder if our children will ever grow to be as old as us. Or is it all just going to get worse? When I thought about it, I had to cry. We have to know where they are setting up landing strips on this side of the border because it means drug sales will increase them and the black market will grow. We will fight to the end for the land that feeds us. That is our life. And not just for us, for all the people on this planet. When the men are on the road, the village Apusha belongs solely to the women. Like Dora, Moises and Benki's sister, the women live very independent lives and keep old Indian traditions alive. In our communities, the women choose their husbands. When I was 20, I chose my husband. I chose an Indian so that I could stay here in the village. Since my mother is white, I wanted my children to be pure Ashaninka. I was also in love with him. At the age of 20, Dora had her first child. Now she has four. The women here in the village have up to 18 children. Girls usually get married at the age of 12. Sometimes the girls get pregnant for the first time at 15 or 16. But you have to be married already. When the contractions begin, we go into the forest. We give birth there alone. The birth is usually very quick. Someone rarely suffers for two days. Medicine from plants makes the births so easy. Wearing self-woven tunics, making pearl jewelry, such traditions were in danger of being forgotten. Dona Pichi encouraged the Indians to keep them alive. When she moved here, many Ashaninka had already adapted their living habits to those of the white people. Many people only dressed in clothes that white people brought with them. I said to them, they should never neglect their own culture. Look at me. I live here with you, but that doesn't mean I change who I am. I am me, and you have to be you. We should respect each other. Don't change the way you dress. Don't change your language. Yet, not all the Ashaninka's recollections of the whites' intervention are bad. Once, a woman brought twins into the world. As is usual with the Ashaninka, the mother wanted to kill the weaker child because she couldn't bring up both. Until the patron talked around. He said, they are both people. If you raise them, they will both help you a lot later. She thought about it for a whole night, and then decided to keep both. <laughs> Dona Pichi's husband, Antonio, the father of Moises and Benki, was also once the weaker of two twins, and survived thanks to the advice of a white man. Today, he is the chief of the Ashaninka. The 
chief's sons hurry to reach the village of the Contanawa. The deforestation for the illegal airport could have been prevented. The Contanawa could have called for help by email. Now, it seems even more important that as many rainforest communities as possible get access to the internet. The village Sechi Estrela lies deep in the jungle. Getting access to the internet will fundamentally change its contact with the outside world. The village elders and a few young people are already waiting. They don't get visitors very often here. It is midday. The sap of an ancient forest plant offers protection from the scorching sun. The indigenous peoples of the Amazon rainforest have so far lived largely isolated from each other. All that will now change. For the first time, we are connecting the villages in Amazonia to each other. And that doesn't merely give us internet access. If we join together, we can also revive our shared culture. That is very important for us. In the rainforest, the internet is only used for self-defense. There is barely any demand for surfing or shopping here. In each village, just one person is trained in how to use the computer. A few last things, and then, there it is, the internet. The 35-year-old Z has never seen a computer in his life. Okay, Zay, I'll show you now how the internet works here in the middle of the forest. Take the mouse. That's the arrow here. Where is the arrow now? Move it up the screen. Then like that, and now click on the right. One after the other. You just need practice. After their work is done, they stay in the village for a while. Benki sings the song of the hummingbird. It was written for him when he was a little boy. A woman is already waiting in front of Moises' house back home in Apusha. Her baby has had a stomach ache for days and isn't keeping food down. She hopes Shaman Moises will heal it. 
The Ashaninka believe that human beings are made up of three parts, the body, the spirit, and something in between to balance them. Moises is an anti-aviari, a healer who treats the body only. I take tobacco leaves from the region and mix them with other plants. The treatment is a sort of prayer. The tobacco smoke drives out the evil spirit that has taken hold of the child. Moises blows smoke on the areas where the spirit could have penetrated the body. All the controls for our body are in the head, but there are also areas in the feet which control the body, and sometimes the illness gets in through the feet. It then sits in the stomach. You have to remove it from there and clean everything. The baby is doing better, but it is not yet fully recovered. They are instructed to return the next day. Shaman Moises sees plants as powerful living things. When he paints, the spirits of the primeval forest come to life. The pictures appear like thoughts. I look and they come. Most of the pictures I paint appear to me in the clouds. This bird is like a messenger that brings far away things to you. For Moises, this mythical world is perfectly real. This jaguar here is a white jaguar that lives in heaven. His name in our language is Bogrumain. But we don't say his name often to make sure he doesn't hear it. Otherwise he would maybe come to earth to find out what we want from him. And when he comes, he eats everything. You can't kill this jaguar with arrows. He is very dangerous. The shamans make sure he doesn't come nearer. For me, painting is like a dream. I dream it and do it. This peace is very good. It strengthens the spirit and the lust for life. The Indians feel completely at one with the rainforest. They say if they were to lose the rainforest, they wouldn't be Indians anymore. That's why it's much more than just work for the Ashaninka. They want to show how people can contribute to protecting the Earth's climate with concrete examples. They reforest areas that have been slashed and burned. Three hectares of land have already been replanted with rainforest trees. The reforestation was funded by a concert by the British rock band The Police. A modern deal, environmental gain for environmental damage over a distance of 4,000 kilometers. The idea came from millionaire Joao Fortes. The band's transatlantic flights, the electricity for the show, the traveling costs of the audience, all these activities caused harmful CO2 emissions. It is possible to measure exactly how much. The NGO in Rio collects the data required. The carbon footprint of the live concert, 640 tons of CO2. With the money that the band donated, the Ashaninka were able to plant as many trees as needed to compensate for the damage caused to the climate. 
Então, se cada empresa puder fazer a sua If every company solve a need to continuously offset their own emissions, even if it was only for certain events, this would be an effective and lasting form of climate protection. The system of reforesting the rainforest as a way of offsetting CO2 emissions is finding avid support among more and more Brazilian companies. At Fashion Rio, the designer label Cantal neutralized its fashion show's impact on the climate. Press spokesman Richard Yates. It's marketing too, but it has to be a genuine commitment. I see it as an obligation. The positive effect on the image is pretty much secondary. It's about the role you have in the world. Face painting has a deep significance for the Ashaninka. Benki, his father and his son are decorating themselves with symbols of forest animals jaguars, macaws, and snakes, in preparation of the biggest festival of the year. I'm getting all dressed up. Every symbol reflects how you feel at the moment. When we paint ourselves, we unveil our true beauty. You should feel a person's spirit. I am a very powerful warrior. That's why I'm painting myself as a warrior. The symbols show the enemy my courage. I liked how my father painted his face. I thought, oh, now he looks more handsome than me. That's why I chose another symbol with another spirit. Then he'll think I'm more handsome. Their face painting is also a symbolic invitation to all the inhabitants of the ancient forest to join the Ashaninka's celebrations. The fashion show by Cantao is beginning at Fashion Rio. Getting the models there and transporting the collection consumes thousands of kilowatt hours of electricity. The fashion label's show causes 10 tons of CO2. 800 square meters of rainforest will be planted to compensate for them. I'm pleased that my job is so genuinely and sincerely devoted to environmental protection. I'm proud to continue on this path. When you see how the idea is spreading and how the customers respond to it, it's incredible. <laughs> In Rio, they have recognized the need to get involved in order to save the rainforest. The 24th of June, the biggest day of celebrations for the Ashaninka. It is the anniversary of the day the Indians got their territory back from the Brazilian state, after 250 years. The beat of the drum is so strong, as if it were a heartbeat. When everyone beats at the same time, it is so strong that some women start crying, and some men too. It conjures up special power. For three days and three nights, 
the Ashaninka celebrate what they have achieved in the last few decades. They have secured their territory, preserved their cultural identity, and connected to the modern world. Money doesn't get us into heaven. When we die, we don't take it with us. We must fight for our food, our water, our forest. Everything God gave us. Then you have an honest life. When you die, you live on in every tree, every river, in each moment that you lived. If everyone thought that way, our planet would be a very different place. Moises and Benki are on their way again. Dozens of Indian villages will be connected to the internet this year. This strengthens the indigenous communities and their traditions. It allows them to fight for the rainforest with modern weapons and for a better climate on Earth.